Hi everyone, so I've got a question from uh, a trader who said, hello, can you please explain how you do pre-news trades and post-news trades with taking, a, taking into account the macroeconomic differential background of the currency pair that is being traded? Also, I'd like to confirm whether or not if your fundamental analysis trade entry trigger involves uh, an approach that considers the macroeconomic differential background relevant news releases supporting or refuting the market narrative and technical analysis signals aligning with the trading view is this correct so what i'll do is um i kind of break it down as simply as i can in terms of my process and how i go about uh, looking at um, you know pre and post news trades um, of course uh, I've been doing this for years so I kind of do this automatically but um, you know it might seem like a bit of a long process but the more you do it is uh, the, the more you get comfortable with doing this so um, so first things first is I'm looking at uh, obviously like a fundamental bias in terms of um, interest rate divergences right now, interest rate divergence to me is one of the main uh, factors in a currency's um, uh, strength or weakness uh, or appreciation or devaluation, right? And so, you know, typically we're looking for um, uh, central banks that are, you know, hiking versus central banks that are potentially holding or cutting rates, right? And so, uh, you know, every week on, you know, and every Wednesday and every Saturday, we're looking at and uh, you know updating you know this is my bias for example and i'm looking at you know certain you know pairs which i think have uh, the potential for the strongest divergences if not in the short term you know for the medium term and short term medium term is maybe you know one to three months maybe into six months beyond you know the one to three to six months period i'm not necessarily looking at but um you know this is basically where i uh you know, show you guys uh, my bias, uh, whether I'm long short or I'm interested, um, but not necessarily with a very strong bias. It's definitely on the watch list, and um, I stay. I still might take these trades, but with a bit more caution. And when I say caution, just to just to lower position size and less uh, position risk. And so, once I've got my uh, my bias, matter of fact, um, I'm doing my pre news fundamentals. So I'm looking at the bias. I'm looking at data forecasts on trading economic. And I'm looking at the overall market consensus, and that's just by reading, um, you know, news reports from Bloomberg, from ING, um, etc. You know, the, the, the bank um, analysis from you know MUFG, etc. So, you know, um, I'm looking at the the, the the market consensus, and I'm looking at the data forecast. So the data forecast would be, um, for example, um, from here, right? So, um, if we're looking at last what happened last week so let's say friday the 4th of august and it was a big day for the us right so non-farm payrolls was expected to come out at 185 right so we're looking at the previous and then you're looking at also employment yeah the employment data what is what is the consensus number uh, that may come out and the, and the forecast number is um, trading economics own economists forecasting what they think. So you've got consensus number, you've got a forecast number, you've got the previous, right? And then you've obviously got the actual that came out. And also as well, uh, other data like um, for, in the, in, for, the, for the dollar and for every other um, currency, you want to look at anything that's you know, related directly to inflation. So average hourly earnings was something um, that you know, we look towards as well because if average hourly earnings and it is an inflation measure and if it comes down, then it is more likely that the Federal Reserve is likely to hold rates, right? Because if inflation is, you know, comes higher or is more sticky, then um, there's a chance that the Federal Reserve could continue to hike. Now, again, my bias was on the dollar yen for a sell. So what's the dollar yen now? Here we go, right? For the dollar yen and it's been that way for a, for a while i i know that this trade has a bit of nuance to it in terms of um it's a bit more of a riskier trade um i'm anticipating more yen strength because of the bank of japan um, adjusting yield curve control recently which is one of the first steps towards policy normalization more policy normalization meaning that they are likely to in at some point within the you know either this year or next year start to now um, hike rates and 
um, you know, move from negative interest rates. And so that should be positive while pretty much all other central banks are looking to end their hiking cycle, right? So there's that divergence in place. So, um, so that's, you know, just, just a, an example of a bias that I have um, and, uh, you know, and uh, where my trading direction is. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all of that and I'm saying my bias, data forecast, market consensus, is it, you know, supporting my, uh, my, my uh, trade idea or is it not? Yeah. So um, if it's not, then, you know, I might kind of stay on the sidelines in terms of a pre-news trade because I'm thinking I'm a bit more unsure. Right. So if you're not, if that is not pointing in your direction, then you just don't get into any trades pre-news. That's pretty much it. But if it's more, if you see, for example, um, uh, and I haven't got my pencil, I'll do it on here, right? Um, so if you see, for example, there's forecasts that come out. Yeah, the forecasts are coming out and they're not necessarily good for the dollar, right? But you see the dollar moving higher, then all that is telling you is that it's a, this is a better place to look to short the dollar, right? Now, if you have a situation where the forecasts are coming out and um, they're not supportive of the dollar either, but you see prices going lower, yeah, then you not necessarily you don't necessarily want to short the dollar down here, yeah. And so, um, you know, kind of moving on to you know pre news technicals, this is the idea behind looking at whether you know price is cheap or expensive, yeah, is, is in a cheap or expensive location. So. On the dollar yen, right before we got to non-farm payroll news, you know prices were coming to the upside, which meant to me, if my bias is to the short side, yeah, and I'm trying to buy the yen, yeah, meaning I'm hoping prices do something like that, then that makes sense for me. This is a cheap area, right? Because this was expensive uh, for the dollar and cheap for the uh, yen. If it wasn't, then prices would have moved higher, and vice versa. This was expensive. For the yen and cheap for the dollar because prices moved higher, right? So, um, as prices came up to, to this area here, I'm now looking at this and saying to myself, okay, um, uh, as we get towards you know Friday, I'm looking at that and I'm saying to myself, all right, and this is a nice area to potentially look for a short if the data comes out and supportive of you know the, the trade, right? And again. I say this all the time, but nobody knows, right? No one's going to know, you know, what happens in terms of the data. You know, economists uh, can be wrong. We're, we're trusting in their uh, their analysis, but they are, you know, they can be wrong and they're wrong, you know, from time to time, a bit more often than usual uh, recently. But if they're right about the forecast, their forecasts, then you can look to take a pre-news trade. And a pre-news trade would just basically mean, okay, well, you have you won't have the confirmation. So what do you do in that sense? You just lower your position size, take a smaller than normal position uh, in anticipation that prices may go in your favor, right? But yeah, so one second. So looking at the location is very, very, very important and where you are. You wanna buy low, sell high, right? You don't wanna, you know, um, start buying, looking to buy the dollar if the location is all the way at expensive areas. Even if the news comes out supporting your 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 uh, your trade, you always wanna look to buy on pullbacks. And so um, the pre-news entry uh, or news setup, yeah, so for example, that could be a, a stop hunt, a just a, a, a supply demand zone in an extreme, um, you know, RSI, um, you know, or and and uh, and and an entry, whether that's uh, the, the catch a pain candle or um, you know a close back inside a level one, for example, something like a stop hunt. Um, I, you know, I'm looking to take that um, one to probably three days before the actual news um, uh, news announces, right? And again, there's not too much news every week. You know, some news, some weeks are obviously busier than others. But if, for example, you know, I'm looking at, for example, selling the dollar, then obviously the main news for that week, the main catalyst for price movement should be uh, non-farm payrolls on the Friday. And so if we go to, uh, 
you know the, uh, the, the, the uh, like a pre news trade right so you can see by Tuesday prices came up into that you know 80% supply zone so you can start to look for if you you know you've done your pre news analysis and you think that prices should want to come down you can start to look for trades in and around this area and in fact there was a stop line trade that occurred on the Thursday the day before um, the, uh, the uh, non-farm news came out, right? And so, again, you're looking at that as, um, you know, an entry to get involved in a nice stop hunt um, uh, trade, yeah, with the anticipation, again, because nobody knows what is going to happen. No one can predict the future. It's the reason why we manage our risk um, with the anticipation that prices... Yeah, we'll continue following through and then the news that comes out on a Friday, which would have been, you know, here, yeah, is supportive of your um, of your trade, right? Of your trade bias in your direction. And so, um, and if it's not, then what you do is you look to either trail your stop down, lock in maybe some profits and break even. If you've got any um, and get to break even um, or a small profit, whatever it is, or you look to just take, you know, full profits if you just feel that, you know what, I'm in decent profits and, you know, the news has kind of gone against me. So, um, you know, you just get out of the trade, right? Um, and so from that perspective, um, that is really how um, I look to uh, trade now, if, uh, as far as my trading process in terms of pre and post news. Now, if, um, for example, you know, news goes your in, in, in my direction, your direction, then um, you can look to add into the trade depending again on the setup, if there's a setup there. Sometimes you can you know, look to actually you know, just press uh, a sell or a buy. I've, I rarely ever do that. I tend to wait for candlestick confirmations, right? Um, and, um, and yeah, so that, that's you know, for me, but um, you can obviously decide what what it is that you want to do, and every news event is different. Every news event will show different data. The news that came out on Friday, yeah, was actually quite confusing because you had non-farm payrolls actually come out lower than the consensus, but then you had unemployment go down and also um, average hourly earnings uh, go up, which is basically inflationary right in nature and so although there are cracks in employment inflation is still remaining sticky right and so um you know i did say this on the friday in, in the group call i just said that look there is um there is you know issues in terms of you know the clarity and not every single news release is going to be you know very very clear sometimes it is sometimes it isn't right but um if it comes out clear, then you can make decisions. If, you, if you're unsure about the trade and what it means, obviously you can ask um, and in the group. And if, you know, I give an answer or, you know, the, the guys in the group give an answer that is, you know, maybe just look, stay on the sideline, don't enter any new trades, etc. Then you can start to manage your trade if you're in a pre-news trade already. And so, um, you know, the post-news trade, when the news comes out, is it supportive? Is it a setback to your to your trade um, or is it a change? Now, a setback could mean the data necessarily might be one in, let's say, 10, right? Let's say, for example, you've got, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, let's say five data releases that, that you look at, right? And out of the five, four have been really, really positive. And then, you know, the one that comes out has been like mm, a bit shaky, a bit wobbly, or maybe just not as positive as the market expected. What you want to do is still look at the overall data, yeah, and say, okay, is inflation likely to come into um, into play? Is the Fed, Federal Reserve still likely to hike rates, even though they've had one bad data point? Because one bad data point could be a bit of a blip, right? Not everything doesn't move up, yeah, in a straight line. And everything doesn't move down in the straight line, right? You have peaks and troughs, right? You have areas where all the, in a trend, and that's not just a price trend in any kind of data trend that you're tracking, you can have, you know, whether it's GDP, whether it's inflation, whether it's jobs, you're going to have 
um, you know, periods where jobs might be going in a downtrend, but you might have, you know, maybe a month or two where jobs might actually go up, right? But the overall trend is to the downside. And so the market might look past the negative number and say, well, overall, we've had four good data you know, points or bad data points uh, for the, uh, for the uh, dollar or whatever currency. And that is going to be stronger than just one data point. Yeah. And so you have to take that also into account as well. So try to think about what is the bigger picture and not micro or hyper focus on just one uh, news data point. Yeah. So um, that's why I say, um, you know, is it a bit of a setback in the short term? And possibly it could be a setback in the short term. You know, there's 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 nothing wrong with when the news comes out, right? Is not trying to react. I know you see these these videos where brokers, you know, do this thing where they say, oh, you know, you've got to be sharp, you've got to think quick, you've got to make decisions, you know, instantly, and all that kind of. That's all. That's all nonsense, right? In terms of the way that we trade, right? Sometimes. And a lot of times, in fact, it's best to just sit and watch the dust settle. Don't worry if you miss the move because you're never really going to miss a move overall in terms of if this was such if this is such a massive move to the downside and it's going to trend to the downside. Guess what? You're going to get a pullback at some point. Yes, you might not get the initial move to the downside, but you will, as night follows day, get in on a pullback. So don't worry. You don't, your job is, as a trader isn't to capture every single high and every single low. That's impossible. So just understand that if it's if if the data comes out right and you're not sure about the move, and let's say for example it starts to go to the downside, don't be don't FOMO into price. If it doesn't make sense to you as to why the move is doing what it's doing and the price is doing what it's doing in the short term, don't chase. If you understand that, yes, you know what, this was really bad data for the dollar and it's, you know, it, it means that it's, prices are likely to, you know, continue going to the downside a few hundred pips, then of course you can start to short uh, immediately or wait for maybe a candle close confirmation to try to try to look for a short or a long trade, right? But if it doesn't make sense, if the news doesn't make sense, to you or it's a bit unclear um you know or undecided in the market some people are saying it's positive some people are saying it's negative as they were saying with non-farm payrolls then just don't worry about it right just wait for the dust to settle it's best not to jump into trades and FOMO and get caught on the wrong side of the market because that's what the market you know has a habit of doing right because it's a business model um you know the, the market makers are searching for liquidity Right. And so and and so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's um, short term, you know, uh, moves aren't necessarily to be believed if they're not backed up by some sort of data. Right. So with that being said, I'm just trying to go back and make sure I've covered everything. So I wait for a close or a candle um, or you can enter immediately, but it depends on how supportive the news is. If the news is not supportive, consider taking profit as well and trailing, uh, you know, your stop loss if the news comes out and it goes against you. So um, that is really my uh, my take on um, how I look at, you know, pre and post news trades. Um and I'm just thinking if there's anything else that I missed out. So I'd like to confirm whether or not you look at fundamental analysis trade entry trigger. I don't know what the fundamental analysis trade entry trigger is. <laughs> it's just a, I'm just looking at um you know uh, 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 trade entry is basically just uh, like I said a capture pain candle or um you know even like a, a stop hunt pin bar for example something like that a close back inside the level um, that I'm interested in. Um, so it's more of a technical thing because my bias is just to look for a, a buy or a sell, right, overall. And the actual level and the actual setup, whether it's a CPR, a stop hunt, or just a daily supply and demand zone with, um, you know, at a level. So, uh, so that involves an approach that considers the macroeconomic differential background. Absolutely, it does. Uh, relevant news releases supporting absolutely uh, the market narrative and technical analysis signals aligning with the trading view so pretty much that's it yeah everything that i've pretty much spoken about that's the process and so and so yeah um 
yeah, that's really it, right? It, and as I said, it's really important to look at where you are from a location perspective. It's all important, to be fair, but it's really important to look at where you are from a location perspective. And, you know, the opportunity really is is not if the market prices in the news already. It's more about if the market is, if price is doing something different to maybe what the forecasts and the fundamentals are saying, then, you know, if the, if the, if the forecasts and the fundamentals are, for example, you know, projected to be, um, to depreciate a currency, yet you're seeing price go to the upside, yeah, and it's appreciating, but the forecasts are saying something different, the market consensus is saying some, something different, then that, for me is a trade a, a great trading opportunity yeah and even if the market is wrong about that and they say the market's been trending up and let's say for example the news is wrong and the forecasts are all wrong and then you know there is positive news for that you know trade i'm still not going to buy at highs i'm still going to wait for prices to go up if it depends obviously it depends on my if, if the news is enough to change my fundamental bias but if it is enough to change my fundamental bias and I want to get long on that trade, then I'm waiting for a pullback. Always wait for pullbacks. For me, anyway, I can't tell you exactly how to trade. Of course, everyone has their, you know, their different methods and you know, you know, you're managing your own money, right? But ultimately, I'm looking at looking at um, uh, buying on always on the pullback. So um, again, the edge is where the market consensus. Yeah, and price are not necessarily aligning. So that's one of the things uh, to really kind of look towards, not buy at highs and sell at lows. It's buying low and actually selling high. So yeah, I think I've covered everything. Uh, anything else, I will let you guys know in the room. And if you have any further questions on the video, uh, yeah, definitely um, um, you know, uh, comment in the, uh, in the Discord group and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Anyways, guys, hope that was helpful. Take care and speak to you all soon.